The reason why I'm so successful, Tyrone, is not because of the fact that I'm the smartest guy around, right? It's because of the fact that I'm able to finance these BIPOC entrepreneurs that nobody else will have confidence in. Mm. Nobody else. So they come to me with these great ideas and I pat them on the back and say, here's a, a million dollars or here's $2 million or here's a hundred thousand dollars. All right, big brother, Wes Hall, king of Bay Street. You might see him on the Dragon's Den. If you're lucky enough to see him, he's doing something amazing. So that means you're probably doing something good. Welcome back to E-Talk. How are you? Thank you, my brother. Thanks for having me again. I guess where I want to start with you is when we think about entrepreneurship, it usually takes a bit of nerve to walk into a space that you're not welcomed. You walk into a space that's foreign. You walk into a space, and that, and that goes for anybody, not just black people. So. When you think about black entrepreneurs specifically, what type of obstacles are they facing? But also what makes it a good idea for a young black person to dive into that world? To be an entrepreneur, it's hard. If you are white, black, purple, or magenta, it is hard to be an entrepreneur, okay? If you now go out there and you're trying to find capital and every person that you go to say no, it makes it even harder for you to be an entrepreneur. Right. But if every person that you go to also say, no, I don't like this idea, I thought they're not going to give you money, but they're actually telling you that the idea is terrible and you're not going to be successful. It makes it even harder. So black entrepreneurs, it's kind of like a rarity because they're hearing all these no's and you can't and you won't and you, you, you'll fail. And yet they're doing it. They're doing it and they're being successful at it in spite of all the obstacles. Would you say it's much better just because it required so much more to get there? So the more struggles that you go through and you successfully overcome them, the sharper it makes you, the better it makes you, the more successful it makes you. So if I go through all those things and I open a store and I'm selling to people after going through all that, chances are my store is gonna be more successful than the person who didn't have to think their way through every single step of the way to open that business. Right. I have the opportunity to talk to you right now during Black History Month. So I wanna do this for the people that don't have this opportunity to talk to you. And this is a question I think that everyone can benefit from. Just like how there is a, a void right now in trades and they're literally giving incentives, they're asking people to get into trades. Is there areas other than trades that you could see young black entrepreneurs or young black people that want to be working professionals that you would suggest them putting their energy in? So when I started Kingsdale Advisors, I didn't start a business that's going to emulate a business that's, that's already exists and I'm going to be competing with people in the same space. I said, I'm going to create something that just don't exist in Canada right now. Right. And I'm going to build it and I'm going to bring it to the market and I'm going to be best at it because I'm only going to get to do that for a certain period of time where I prove this business model and other people are going to go, wait a minute, look at that West Hall guy. In spite of the fact that he's black, he's on Bay Street and he's making money. I better get into that business. Right, right. And guess what? It'd be a lot easier for those people to get into that business because they're going to have access to capital. They're going to have parents who are going to be able to write them a check. They're going to have friends who are going to be able to bootstrap them. So at the end of the day, their runway is going to be a lot better and faster than me. So once I came up with that idea of I'm going to build Kingsdale, I'm going to build it differently. I had to run fast, like really fast to own that market so that when the competition comes, which I know that they will, I'm already so far ahead of these guys, they can't catch me, right? And okay. so right now I started a business. One really was in the market, right? They left and they run out of business. Now we have five firms doing it, five, okay? And they're well financed. But guess who has 70% of the market share? My firm, right? Mm -hmm. Because the first thing I did was when I start to get my initial clients, I built the relationship with those clients so tight, so tight, that not even a dynamite can separate me, my relationship between those clients' relationship, right? So when the competitors start knocking on the door of my, my clients and say, hey, come do business with us, or they go, I stole one of Wes's employees, you know what my client's response was? Did you steal Wes? Because if you didn't steal Wes, I'm not moving my business over there. And I just wanted to take a second to check in with you as to Black History Month 2022. What does uh, Black North look like this year? First of all, blacknorth.ca. We have some amazing announcements okay. about working with financial institutions that we're going to control capital 
that we're going to allocate to black owned businesses wow. that we're working with these banks. There's some of these deals that you're going to see announced that are completely transformatory, like they're completely transformational. There's things that we just haven't thought about historically, right? Whereby black people, black organizations are going sit with me and I'll determine if I want to support you or not. That's what's up. Well, listen, always a pleasure, always some gems to walk away from whenever we get a chance to talk. So, you know, you got a family of support here at ETOC. Happy Black History Month and thanks for your time today. Thanks, my brother. Always love, always love.